didn't tell you is that Cindy has known me for more than 30 years. And I'm not, I won't say anything if you won't say anything. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Chairwoman Leon, for that wonderful, wonderful introduction. And welcome uh, to our class of 2013, Colonel, and all of your staff, and my commanders, and your administrative staff, instructors, families, friends, my fellow colleagues in the legislature, Alan Fletcher. Thank you so much. I, um, I am so honored to be here with you today. I want to really shout out to our Department of Safety Commissioners. You know, when the Senate confirms those governor's uh, uh, appointees, um, it is a, an extremely important job. You see, the way our legislature works is, um, you know, the governor appoints people to commissions and boards, and then they're confirmed by the Senate. And although Alan and I would like to tell you that we're in charge, what we do is make the laws and set the budget. But it is the duty and responsibility of our commissioners to carry out uh, that implementation of the budget to lead and to give the director uh, all of the guidelines that are, are, are supposed to be. So our commissioners really do a tremendous amount of work. Um, I'm so pleased today to be um, here with my legislative colleague, um, Alan Fletcher. The, He's the vice chair of the House Homeland Security and Public Safety Committee and chairman of the Law Enforcement Subcommittee, a retired Houston police officer. You know, he's the only retired peace officer in the Texas House. And it's my understanding that it's a very special day today for your family as your son Blake is among our graduating class today. So I want to say a special thank you to the whole Fletcher family. Congratulations, because last time I was at a graduation was class 77B. And that was when my brother-in-law, uh, Jack Murray, was in that class. And so I can tell you how excited the whole family is. Um, that class of 77B, uh, when we watched Jack graduate, um, it was such a proud moment for our family, and it was such an affirmation for me. Uh, law enforcement is such a part of my family. Uh, my dad, um, a proud Korean War veteran, uh, Daniel San Miguel, um, passed away uh, a little over a week ago, and he was, uh, at first, a Bear County uh, Sheriff's Officer. He had District 6, and he had badge number 116. A little after his time in the Sheriff's Department, he got recruited by the District Attorney to come and do investigations. At that time, there was a great need in the late 50s uh, for Spanish-speaking law enforcement uh, officers who had that investigative background. So he worked for the district attorney's office and then later worked for the coroner's office. In the, uh, after he retired, he was quite in demand as an investigator with uh, companies and attorneys. And one of the things that he did, and our family is so proud of, is he uh, was great at missing persons. Uh, he certainly kept track of all five of my brothers and sisters, <laughs> but he, um, he got to solve something, um, which was the murder of a law enforcement officer along the border, and the case had gone cold for several years. And one of the proudest things my dad had was after he, and it took him almost two years um, to get that investigation, and mind you, he did that kind of as a private citizen at the request of the family as well. After those two guys were convicted, my daddy received from the family the officer's badge, and that was his most prized, prized possession, because it signified for him 
that as a law enforcement officer and an investigator, he was always looking out, and the first call was public safety, but and helping to solve that crime. One of the things that we know that is Texas is a proud state, and it's a big state, and so we're so happy to see a very large class. I understand our next class is a very large class as well, because we need you. And we know that you have that higher calling, and so much is expected of you as you hit the road, you become our troopers. There's another group of folks that we owe a great debt of gratitude. And Alan and I are constantly reminded as we are on that House floor or the Senate floor that the reason that we can debate in freedom, that we can say what we say and disagree with our government, is because of the price that has been paid by the generation after generation of men and women who have served in our country's armed services. As we approach our 4th of July holiday and pay tribute to the original patriots, let us today acknowledge those men and women, if you've served in the Army, the Air Force, the Navy, Marines, the Coast Guard, active duty, Guard and Reserve, would you please stand and allow us to express our gratitude to you? Those of you, all of our veterans, please stand. Going through his veins, he is not alone. 
there is another law enforcement officer sitting right next to him every single day. That's the type of commitment to each other. The sense of duty, the sense of devotion and sacrifice. Anyone who embarks upon your career path is clearly motivated by a higher calling. I uh, have the best job in the Senate. I get to chair the Senate Veteran Affairs and Military Installations Committee. So I get to speak to a lot of people with that great moral high caliber. Um, that's why you're in a, such a special group. What kind of individual steps up to the plate and says, send me a human being to step up and become a peace officer? And even among peace officers, and I respect them all, you are so special. You are lucky. You are joining the most prestigious and respected law enforcement agency in the United States. The Texas Department of Public Safety has a grand history. Stepping back in time, even before the founding of the Republic of Texas, you're part of a story that winds its way back. Part of the story way before the Alamo. 1823, the Texas Rangers, and in its modern form since 1935. You have a tremendous duty, protect Texans all the way from the mountains of El Paso to the piney woods of the Big Thicket and the Panhandle Plains to the beaches of Padre Island. And you'll be in a position to do that job because you have been excellently trained. And it's our job to make sure that you're well compensated. And we're so thankful, finally, to be able to get some pretty good pay raises for our DPS officers this time. It was the first thing we did when we had a little money. Um, and it needs to be done more and more. I've often said I want our DPS officers well compensated, well trained, and with the best equipment that you absolutely need to do your job. And for me, it's personal. Very personal. So I'm going to ask you to do something personal for me. A few sessions ago, I became aware of the horrible stain upon our beautiful state, and that's the scourge of human trafficking. It's really um, a word for modern day slavery. It is the exploitation of people who are forced into labor or into the sex trade, and it is a horrible, vile crime, one whose motivations are profits. It was brought to my attention by a San Antonio doctor who introduced me to a young boy who had been sold into sex slavery. And his injuries were so severe from that exploitation that she had to perform operations on him. I looked into the matter deeper and I was startled to find out that the I-10 corridor is the major hub in this country for that sort of crime. I've met many survivors and often they were first forced into those activities when they were runaway teens or foster kids. You see, they didn't have a great life to begin with. The Department of Public Safety has been crucial in this fight against human trafficking. And Texas is the leader with the training that has gone on because law enforcement agencies like DPS know the severity and the importance of going after these traffickers. The DPS partnered with the FBI and the National Center for Mission and Exploited Children to create the premier training course in this country designed to help patrol officers. In fact, it is used by many, many other states in identifying abducted or endangered children. And that's where you come in. That's where you do me this huge personal favor. I know many Texans think of you as the highway patrol, but you're way, way more than that. With this training, a routine traffic stop could instead become a moment where you save someone's life, a moment where you free them from a lifetime of slavery. And I am so thankful, Colonel, under your leadership and that of the commission that y'all have taken this leadership role that saved lives. After all the survivors that I have met, it has moved me personally to work hard, and, along with Alan Fletcher, to give the prosecutors and peace officers those stronger tools to go after those pimps who carry out this crime and to take 
them down. You'll probably meet some of these survivors yourself over the next few years, and I know that you're gonna share my passion in helping them. We're gonna do everything we can down the street at the Capitol to take care of them on our end with the strongest laws that my colleagues and I will put into place, but it is meaningless without your bravery, without your smart brain to recognize maybe that a routine stop is really, when you peel that layer back, really a case of human trafficking. I know that you're gonna find your job. This is not just a job or a career. It's your life, so very rewarding. And you're motivated by a higher calling. But we can't expect you to do it alone. Behind you are your loving families, your spouses, your parents, your brothers and sisters, and your children. And to acknowledge them, I, all of you are here. Believe me, have you gone through this very grueling 24 weeks, there have been people back home praying for you every night and loving you and so proud of you. You're not just gonna provide for your families. You are the example for your family and your community. During the regular session, we were able to get those pay increases and it's important because we want you to stay. We want you to stay as DPS. We want the most capable, the best skilled, and the most passionate in our state law enforcement agency. I see a lot of enthusiasm here today, but one of the things I was not expecting was how dang good looking y'all are. <laughs> I mean, I've seen, I, I think, I think I'm cool. He's my Region 6 commander, Commander Ortiz at the Capitol. But let's face it, some of the folks you have are just not, you know, TV material. I don't know what happened. Those recruiters, they are so, or maybe it's because you're so young, you all are so good looking. Look at them. They're not even phased. They are sitting there and not even reacting. But you know how good looking they are. So I am so thankful of your enthusiasm, of your desire to serve. And I know you're going to live up to that DPS motto of courtesy, service, and protection. But I want you to know that when you need the help, you're there for us. And I promise, your legislature is going to be there for you. When I thought about peace officers and the role of peace officers, I thought about Muhammad Ali, right? You know, this slight man. And he said, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. You're going to be in the service of others. You're going to be true heroes. True heroes. Arthur Ashe once said, true heroism is not the urge to surpass all others at whatever cost, but the urge to sub others at whatever cost. There has been costs. When I go to those memorials, there's a cost. Thank you so much for the service that you have already given just to get to this point. And thank you in advance for all the service I know you will give the future. You are committed. You are the best trained in the history of the DPS. Just know that the people of Texas are counting on you. God bless and congratulations to the wonderful class of Holy Virgin.